Hey guys, what's up? Lyndon here. And today I just want to share a business case example um, with you guys that I would have, that I have been using since 2017 um, when I was preparing to get into business for myself. But it's also a model that I've also used while working in corporate where it made sense it made sense for us to really understand the problem, the impact, the solution, and then which markets really and truly we wanted to go into, especially if it was a brand new market. Even if it wasn't a brand new market and we were sort of changing the industry, changing the solution within the industry, we all we also looked at the viability of that. So we sort of broke out what was the strategies that we would have wanted to use to go ahead into sales. And this is something that I actually use with my used with my team. And it's also something that I use for myself day to day. So let's get straight into it. All right, so a lot of us, if we're starting from the standpoint of entrepreneurs, and I'm going to try to balance the conversation between entrepreneurs and salespeople, but you just, you guys just keep that in mind that we're talking about entrepreneurship and also sales, that we must be solving some sort of problem. It doesn't matter what it is. There's always some sort of problem that you are solving or you are enhancing a current situation. And for me, one of the first things that I did is that I did a survey to understand, okay, I want to get involved in, 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 in sales enablement, but is sales, enable, is sales enable, in, enablement sorry, <laughs> really a problem? And for me to do that, I actually did a survey. So I used WhatsApp, I used Facebook, I did, do, I did not really door-to-door, -door, but I was actually moving around giving people sheets to fill out. And um, I kind of maxed out, maxed out at just around 212 respondents. And I saw that 91% of them scored or indicated that they would not live happy with the level of satisfaction from customer service that they were receiving in Trinidad. So that was good for me. That was a good start. What I was able to do there was I was then able to drill down as to which areas specifically they were having the problem. And we saw, you know, these were the first five areas that came up. It was really six. I left out one, not on purpose, right? Uh, but it's really six. But these are really five business factors that Okay, I'm saying that I definitely want to address. Now, why is this important, especially if you're doing corporate solutions? Because of the fact that you get the ability to now be specific. You don't just want to say, yo, everybody's going to buy this or everybody should be interested in this because sometimes I think when entrepreneurs speak like that or when salespeople speak like that, they only see it from their standpoint. They only see it from their point of view. But now we have to drill a little bit further to see, okay, where exactly is the customer being affected? So every, every problem must have an impact. And for me, I saw that the impact was really poor service delivery was affecting customers. Customer satisfaction was dropping uh, significantly. Customers were no longer loyal for many, many different reasons. And of course, the businesses, organizations were suffering because they were getting, their business growth was going lower and lower and lower. And that in itself, guys, is the crux. Like you need to be able to really understand what this is like this is the real problem that you're trying to solve here low business growth but you're tying it back into when you first started to do your survey all right so then what is the actual solution Lyndon so okay you, you've identified what those problems are you've drilled down to identify five solutions within the problem so what's and the impact was the solution what I felt for me getting involved in business meant that I wanted to really change the way customers did four things. Right? I wanted to change the way that they attracted their customers, definitely the way that they engaged, uh, work towards having better commitments with the client, and of course, how do you measure that level of success thereafter? And that for me is my solution coming out of my business model. And what you guys would need to do is always take the time, whether you're doing it with your team or for yourself, is really drill down as to, listen, these are the problems I really want to be solving. Right? And that's really, really important. And sometimes keeping it very concise is easier for the customer to understand, right? Now, that in itself is good. Now you could say, all right, definitely, let's go, into, let's go out to business. But this is where the business side of your entrepreneurial journey really, really is important. And also, when it is a, if it is that you're working as a business unit head, as a VP of sales, or even as a salesperson, you want to say, well, you know, what's the size of the market? Like, how much customers really want our services? Or how many customers can I actually go after? And this is where I really want to share something here with you all. So the next thing that you need to be doing is paying attention to your market. And what I did is I started to break out my market. So I said, you know what, Lyndon, here, listen, let's take a look at all the potential com companies that, that could get services from you. So I went and I pulled out automotive, insurance, office equipment, restaurants, financial services, and I just went down the line because all of these organizations have salespeople or they have marketing people or they have brand managers or they have sales executives or they have customer executives, right? that I can actually put some 
uh, to do some work with. And what I did is that I did a list of approximately 23 verticals and um, I looked at every, the number of registered companies. Now, give or take that they may, this may actually have some errors in it in terms of the numbers, but I came up with approximately 655. Well, it says 655 here, but it's between 654, 644 to 655 companies. And what I, the other thing is that, that I did is, of course, you know, we're looking at the business aspect of the entire thing, right? So I just used a very conservative base rate and I did the math. And I saw that the potential market size was approximately $3.9 million. Now, immediately for me, that was like, you know what? This alone was enough for me to try getting involved in this business. All right? And this is the same approach that you as an entrepreneur need to make sure. Because you want to make sure that your efforts are worthwhile. All right? And what this actually gave me the ability to do, and I still use it to this day, this gives me focus as to who are the companies I suppo I'm supposed to be paying attention to. All right? So again, always have some sort of structure. Let me show you what that did for me. So again, just graphically breaking out the data that I, that I had there was 23 verticals, 644 to 655 registered companies with a total, total addressable market of approximately $3.9 million. And then you have a, serv a serviceable addressable market. Now, what does that mean? The green button or the green bubble of 2.5 million means, okay, the total market size is 3.9, but you don't have a monopoly. I'm not the only person doing this, and not all customers are going to buy from you. So you're looking at, okay, what serviceable, addressable market size am I going to take? And I went conservative, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go with about 2.5 million, right? But that also requires work. So that meant I would have niched down within the same niche of, in terms of the vertical markets, and I said, I can go after this group right now. And then further than that, again, when you do go after that specific group, again, that not everyone in that group is going to buy from you, so I also went to conservative to say, I'm going to try to do about 250000 within my first year, my first two years, to see exactly as to, as to how that goes. And again, that was conservative. Let me just show you something that was a little bit more aggressive. So again, we're looking at the same 23 verticals and, and 644 registered companies. But what I did is that I changed my, I changed my rate from 6000 to 12000 a month to 12000 per customer. And immediately I saw where the value went up. Right. So again, all that I did is that I changed the price from six thousand in terms of me charging a customer to twelve thousand in terms of the services that I wanted to deliver, and I saw that the total addressable market was around seven point nine, with a potential serviceable obtainable market of about five hundred and one k. Right. And that again is you addressing. Okay, if this really makes sense for me to go into, and I had a conservative approach, and then I have a, had an aggressive approach. This is here is extremely important for you all to understand because you need to understand if it is that you are growing your business or if it is that you are in sales and you're looking at how you want to grow your sales year over year, those last two slides that identified your market segments, this here is important because you wanted to have a projection. And for me, I had a projection. No, my business didn't start until 2018, uh, but I had a projection from 2018, 2019, into, sorry, 2017, 18, 19, and of course, if I had 20 days, it would have been higher as well, right? But that just means the strategies that you're developing tying into the entire business structure. Here, of course, it's really important because you need to understand where your revenue is coming from, right? And your revenue should be coming from the many different ways that you want to go about providing services to that market, those markets. So for me, I was looking at sales enablement, business development, market research is still an area that I haven't been able to bring to the market as yet, but CRM is also one of those areas that I wanted to use as a revenue generator towards developing my business. So these are, so right now I'm running three, at least three out of the four that I have listed. And most important, this table that you guys are seeing here comes from Alex Osterweiler. He has a company by the name of Strategizer. And the business model canvas is important because it gives you the ability to really now lay out your business. You can print it out, you can write up on it, but it's always important that you keep going after this over and over and over. And of course, don't ever forget your competitors, right? Because you need to understand, you need to remember that you are not the only person in this business, all right? And it's important that you understand that from you doing this, um, you can either win or lose, or you may be actually be able to align yourself with some of your competitors to grow. So I don't know who's, who are the competitors in your market, but that's important. And then from there, guys, you go into your the later parts of it as to, you know, who we are, what is it that we do, what's our philosophy, um, and methodology. So I really do hope that this made some sort of sense for you all in terms of how do you put together a proper business case. 
but this is really and truly one of the best ways to really keep focused about your business and really drive your team towards, especially if you're, let's say for instance, you're a sales manager, you're an owner, it gives you the ability to drive your team towards specific objectives to say, okay, these are the people that we're actually focusing on and this is what I want everybody to be doing or these are the numbers that we're supposed to hit with our first year or two, all right? So let me know if this made any sense to you at all. If you thought this was valuable, feel free to reach out to me if you need, to, if you need some guidance in terms of setting this up. Other than that, guys, have a great day. Stay productive. Go out there and win and grow your business. Peace.